The L-sit is one of the foundational movements in calisthenics and gymnastics, which requires upper body strength, core strength, and some flexibility. In this video, I'm going to show you how to warm up properly and break down the necessary steps to building the strength to perform the L-sit. All right, warming up for the L-sit is super important. So one of the limiting factors beyond the actual strength to hold the L-sit is muscle inflexibility and muscle cramping. So two areas that tend to cramp or prevent people from holding the L-sit are the hamstrings and the hip flexors or the quads. So we need to make sure we're warmed up properly. I don't normally do static stretching before workouts, but for the L-sit, it's super important to get these areas warmed up so you avoid some of that cramping. So the first stretch we're gonna get into is the couch stretch. So we're stretching out the hip flexors with this stretch. So you can use a bench, you could also use a wall. What we're gonna do is put one foot up on the bench, get this knee, that same side knee, as close to the bench as possible. You're definitely gonna to wanna to use something padded for this stretch. From here, we step forward into a lunge. We wanna keep, keep the hips neutral. So keep the glutes squeezed tight on this side to neutralize those hips. We don't wanna be arch leaning forward like this. Hips neutral, keep your core braced. The more we sit upright and back, the more intense the stretch is gonna be. So we're gonna go 30 seconds per side. Next up, we have pike pulses. So we're gonna go 30 seconds of pike pulses. So now we start to get into that L-sit position. We're gonna be warming up the lower back as well as the hamstrings with this dynamic stretch. So we're gonna be moving throughout this stretch. So to get set up, we're gonna bring our feet together. We're gonna to point our toes forward, flex the quads. From here, we're gonna reach as far forward as we can and then come back to neutral. So nice and easy when you start out, compressing as much as possible. So the goal is to bring your chest as close to your legs as you can. And then again, coming back to that neutral position, 30 seconds of pike pulses. And the last exercise in the warm up is gonna be the high plank, which we're gonna hold for 30 seconds. So it's really important you keep full body tension throughout this plank. So we're gonna start off, shoulders over the wrists, arms are locked out. Feet are gonna to be together, you're gonna to flex your quads, squeeze your glutes, and squeeze your core. Try and pull your belly button into your spine and hold, keeping tension throughout the body the entire time. So we don't wanna be disengaged like so. Again, squeeze those glutes, flex the quads, squeeze the core tight, keep strong tension throughout. Now, once you finish the plank, I want you to go back to the couch stretch and go through this warm up for one more set. So, two total sets of this warm up before we start getting into our progressions. Now, before we get into our progressions, if you have dip bars or equalizers like I have and you can move them around to find the proper distance or the ideal distance in between your bars, I want you to take the tips of your fingers, extend them out. The distance from the tips of your fingers to your elbow should be the distance in between your bars. Now, if you do not have bars that move like me and you just have dip bars at the gym or something like that, and obviously just do what you can with what you have. Getting into progression number one, we have the support hold. So first things first, we need to be able to hold our body in an upright position on our bars before we start bringing our legs up. So you should be able to hold the support hold for 30 to 60 seconds before moving on to progression number two. So we get onto our dip bars here, we're gonna lock our arms out, we're gonna turn the pits of our elbows forward, so we're gonna externally rotate the shoulder, which is the strongest position for our shoulders. We're then gonna hold our body, Totally upright, keeping our chest up, so arms stay locked out the entire time, keeping the core brace tight, feet are gonna be under the hips. Again, keeping that chest nice and tall while holding. Now, we don't wanna be like this. We don't wanna be shrugged. We wanna make sure you're pressing down into those bars, keeping that chest up nice and tall, keeping that core braced. Progression number two, we have the tuck hold. So just like the support hold, you should be able to hold the tuck hold for 30 to 60 seconds before moving on to progression number three. So we get into our strong support position. So arms locked out, pits of the elbows turned forward, chest is gonna be up nice and tall. We're gonna bring those knees up, keeping our feet together, bring those knees up, keeping a nice tall chest. So remember, we're not like this, pressing down into those bars, feet are together, bringing those knees up to parallel. Now, this is too difficult. You can also modify by decreasing that range of motion a little bit. So don't bring those knees up quite as far and you can work your way up to having those knees all the way up. Progression number three, we have the single leg kickouts. So you should be able to perform single leg kickouts with good technique for 30 to 60 seconds before moving on to progression number four. So we're gonna start off in the tuck hold. So turning the pits of the elbows forward, strong tuck hold position, chest is up nice and tall. We're gonna extend one leg out, pointing the toe, flexing the quad, 
and then bring it back to the tuck. So we're gonna alternate legs, making sure you're bringing that leg out to parallel. Again, pointing the toe and flexing the quad. If that's too difficult, you can start by kicking a little bit lower and then working your way up to bringing the legs to parallel. And progression number four, we have the tuck hold kick out. So instead of just kicking out with one leg at a time, we're gonna be kicking out with both legs at the same exact time. You should be able to do tuck hold kick outs for 30 to 60 seconds before moving on to the L sit. I also wanna mention, you guys see me training barefoot. It's best to train barefoot or at least with socks on while doing L sit. This allows us to keep better full body tension. So we're pointing those toes, flexing the quads. It's much harder to keep that tension and keep optimal tension with shoes on. So I highly suggest taking the shoes off when training L sits. So the tuck hole kick out, we get into that tuck hole position. Arms are locked out, chest is up nice and tall. We bring those knees up from here. Kick both legs out to parallel, pointing the toes, flexing the quads. We're gonna hold for a second and then bring those knees back in. If that's too difficult, you can start by kicking a little bit lower and slowly working your way up to that parallel position. Now, if you're able to hold each progression for 30 to 60 seconds, then you are ready to start getting into your L sit. It is super important to follow the progressions if you cannot perform the prescribed amount of time for one of the progressions, please do not progress forward. Make sure that you can do each move with good form for the prescribed amount of time before advancing. Right, I know this from experience that if you just try and skip to the cool, more advanced movements, your body is not gonna be totally prepared to perform those movements with good technique. So it's important to really follow the progressions exactly as I have them laid out. So getting into the l -sit. So in the single leg kickouts and the two leg kickouts, I made note that we need to be pointing the toes and flexing the quads when the legs are fully extended. Now what this does is it creates full body tension. So we have tension through the upper body all the way down to our toes, which makes us most efficient when holding the L-sit. So that lower body tension is super important throughout. So make sure you keep those toes pointed and quads flexed, arms locked out and chest up the entire time. So we're here, we're locked out. Boom, we're holding, keeping that chest up, flexing the quads. Point the toes. Now, if this is too difficult, you can start a little bit lower. And as you get stronger, slowly work your way up to that parallel position. All right, guys, in closing, it's super important that you, number one, do the warm up. Do not just skip the warm up. It's going to pay dividends when training the L sit to make sure that our quads and our hamstrings are loose, flexible, and mobile so we can get into these positions and avoid cramping. So do not skip the warm up. Number two, make sure you're following those progressions. I know I'm saying this again here, but it's important to reiterate and really drive that home. Make sure you're holding each position for 30 to 60 seconds before moving on to the next position. It's super important that our body has the proper strength, has the proper joint strength and ligament strength in each position before moving on to that next more advanced position. So again, make sure you're following those progressions. Do not skip ahead. And lastly, what do you wanna see next? You guys wanna see another tutorial, another follow along workout? Tell me what you guys want to see, what you guys want to see on this channel in the comments below, and I'll see you guys in the next video.